UW360 is proudly supported by Pacific Office Automation, Copy, Print, Workflow, and IT, Problem Solved. For second-year student J.J. Woodley, Suslow Library played a large part in her decision to enroll at the University of Washington. Oh, that's beautiful. That's absolutely amazing. Um, that's one thing that really sparked my interest in the campus itself. Tens of millions of people have followed J.J. through these doors since they first opened in the mid-20s. Built in a Tudor collegiate Gothic style, the library was unlike any other structure in the United States at the time. To have seen a building like this would have required you going to England. You would have had to go to Cambridge or Oxford. This was the brainchild and passion of Henry Suzelo, the university president at the time. In 1927, the original wing of the library was completed, including the grand staircase and the soaring, majestic reading room. But it opened only after Suzelo went over the head of the Washington state governor to raise $300,000. A lot of money then, too much, the governor thought but necessary to build the Cathedral of Learning that Suzelo wanted. Literally, on the day that the building was to be dedicated, the governor fired Henry Suzelo. And the building wasn't named after Henry Suzelo until he died. Since then, additional wings have been added, and combined with other U of W libraries, the university now boasts the ninth largest library system in the U.S., with more than eight million books. Suzelo alone has 60 miles of bookshelves. When I was a student here, many years ago, you basically had to know the Library of Congress or Dewey Decimal Systems to find a book on these shelves. My, how things have changed. Now a media center and state-of-the-art computer system guides you to the giant collection of DVDs, books, and online offerings. Or you may prefer human help. We have a lot of different types of material, so it's hard to create sort of a, there's no real one-stop shop. Uh, but that's what the librarians are, and our library staff are here for. From its Gothic style of architecture to its state-of-the-art computer system, Suzlo's always been a blend of the old and new. But it was one revolutionary new development that initially caused great concern here, the internet. Terrifying for libraries. They worried the internet might keep students at their home or dorm and away from the libraries. And for a while that looked like that was going to be true. Library visits dropped off sharply at first, but after six or seven years, they began to climb again. And now we find that we are busier than this building has ever been. Attracting library users to a growing variety of spaces, from collaborative areas where talk and sharing of ideas is encouraged, to a busy, bustling cafeteria, to the reading room, which features stained glass windows, a hand-painted ceiling 65 feet tall, and absolute silence. The reading room has remained kind of a place of sacred quiet, and the students almost police themselves in that room. Paula Walker helped oversee a $44 million renovation a decade ago. Earthquake bracing is visible through much of the building, but not the reading room. We wanted the reading room to look the same way that it did before the retrofit as it did after, and we succeeded. Also left intact, the 1927 chandeliers, which were originally designed to focus light on the beautiful ceiling above not the darkened desks below. That alarmed the original librarians. So they made the decision and they flipped them all upside down. So since then, the chandeliers are actually all hanging upside down. Lighting the way for generations of scholars inspired by this beacon of knowledge that shines by day and by night. The cathedral of learning that this library was, was built to be continues to be that. It inspires. <laughs>